Are you still using that old DIY keyboard from a year ago? Well, time for an upgrade with this budget-friendly macro keyboard. Floki, what are you doing? Hello everyone and welcome back to the Nerd Cave. It has been a long time since my last macro keyboard video, so I'm happy to share this new improved version with you today. But first, I got a big update to share with you guys. I am creating a course how to make your own macro keyboard from scratch. This will include designing the PCB, making the 3D model and all the code. So this will assume that you have no prior knowledge on working with the Raspberry Pi Pico before. The macro keyboard in the course will be similar to this one here, but it will have different keys. So you can choose to either have these push buttons or any other type of mechanical keys but we will go through all of them. So if that is something you'll be interested in, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. So this video is just an overview on how I built this budget-friendly macro keyboard using the Raspberry Pi Pico. So let's get started. The new added features to this board is that it includes now two rotary encoders, which will give you more control and functionality, like scrubbing through your timeline in Premiere Pro, or as a media control, for example, controlling the volume of your computer, and this gives two more programmable push buttons, which makes this board to have a total of 14 programmable macro keys. This macro keyboard also has a push button here on the side that will allow you to add different modes so you can have custom macros to any of your favorite software, and it will be displayed here on an OLED screen. The added LEDs at the bottom serves two purposes. The first one, it makes the project look a lot more cooler. And secondly, you can know in which mode you are in by looking at the LED light, so you don't have to check the OLED screen to know which mode you are in. The whole project is open source and you can get all the files and code discussed here from my website netcave.xyz. You can customize anything and go crazy with this project. Now let's talk about how I made this, starting with the components you will need. You will need this custom made PCB, a bit more on this later, a Raspberry Pi Pico, OLED display, we are using the SSD1306, two rotary encoders, which you can choose any shaft length, and two caps to go with it. Next we need push buttons for our keys, and I got this panel push button to change the modes. For the different keys I got different colors, you will also need a few connectors to make connecting the push button and addressable LEDs easier. We will need 6 1 kilo ohm resistors, 2 20 pin female header pins, our addressable LEDs, and some wire with a wire stripper. A detailed list is available on the website. The first prototype was made on a breadboard, and then I created a schematic in Easy EDA and designed a simple PCB. And after double checking the dimensions and placement of everything, I placed an order with JLC PCB, which gives you a lot of different options to choose from. But we are not making something complex, so the default will do. I also notice it provides 3D printing service, so if you don't have access to one, you can also order the enclosure for the macro keyboard here. The PCB cell screen indicates all the GPIO pins used on the Raspberry Pi Pico, and it is straightforward and shows where all the components should be placed. Now that we have our PCB, the next step is soldering. So let's put on some tasty jams, and we can, through the magic of editing, make this go very quickly. It is not the most elegant soldering job, but hey, it works, and that is what we are going for here. For the enclosure, I designed two different versions using SolidWorks. I 3D printed both designs, which took a few hours, but it came out looking great. For the bottom part of the case, I made holes, which will make it easier to stick addressable LEDs and to do cable management. So let's connect the LEDs to the bottom plate. You need to make sure about the orientation of the LEDs, that the input goes to the microcontroller, and that the out goes to the next input of the next strip. After sticking all the LEDs, we first can go and put some solder on all the pads, except the last output. Then we just need to solder it all together. You can get more information on working with these addressable LEDs in this video I did here. Now for the assembly part, you will need a few 3mm nuts and bolts to secure everything.
and then we can plug in our Raspberry Pi Pico that has been set up with CircuitPython which if you are not sure how to do this you can watch this video here. I tried using threaded inserts for a bottom plate but I made a mistake as it was all centered. So I used super glue instead which is ok since I'm not planning to open this very soon. Now that the macro keyboard is complete we can go and upload all the libraries and then we can have a look at how can you create your own macro for your favorite software. Download the project file from the Nerdcave website which will give you this compressed file which you can extract. Copy all this file inside and go to your computer where you will see your Raspberry Pi Pico device as a storage device. We can now paste all the code and say yes to replace the files when prompted. This will automatically start running the code and should have a default program on it. So let's take a look at the code.py file here. Open Fonny and select your Pico at the bottom and press stop. Now we can see the files and open the code.py file which is the heart of our macro keyboard functionality. We begin by importing several libraries that is essential for our project. These libraries handle communication with the Raspberry Pi Pico, the OLED display and everything related to graphics. We also need to interact with the keyboard and media controls. For that we have the USB HID library which plays a crucial role in sending commands to the computer. To execute keyboard shortcuts and key presses we rely on a key code class. This provides us with a comprehensive list of keyboard key codes, from letters and numbers to function keys and modifiers. And for controlling media playback, such as play, pause, volume and more, we use the consumer control class along with the consumer control code constant. This allows us to interact with media applications on the computer. With all these libraries in place, our macro keyboard is now ready to display mode names, execute keyboard shortcuts and control media playback. Here we have a dictionary called mode names which maps numbers to the mode names. Each mode has a unique number associated with it. For each mode we have separate functions that handle the key presses and execute macros specific to that mode. For example blender mode handle key press is for a blender mode and windows mode handle key press is for a windows mode and so on. Now let's see how can we switch between the modes using the mode change button. Each time we press the mode change button the mode variable is incremented. If it reaches the maximum value, it wraps back to 1. When the mode changes, we update the OLED display to show the name of the current mode. Now comes the exciting part. As we switch between modes, the macros associated with that mode becomes active. For example, if the current mode is set to Blender, the Blender mode handle key press function is called and all the Blender specific macros are executed. So how do we add a new mode? It's surprisingly easy. We start by creating a new python file. For our custom mode, let's call it mycustommode.py. Inside mycustommode.py, we'll define a function called handleKeyPress to handle the key presses and execute the macros specific to our custom mode. I made a template already for you to use. Here we can implement any custom macros we want. For example, you can make this macro open a specific program, navigate to your favorite website, or even perform complex tasks with a single press. Now that we have our custom mode defined, let's import it into the code.py script to make it part of a macro keyboard. By importing my custom mode.py using the import statement, we can now access the handle key press function and use it in our main script. But to make it user friendly, we should add our custom mode name to mode names dictionary so it appears on an OLED display. Here's where we add the name of our custom mode and associate it with a number. You can choose any number that's not already used by the predefined modes. Just remember to update the loop because now we have six programs. And that's that. Our custom mode is now ready to be used alongside the other modes. I know we just speed run through the code. But like I said, this will require a bigger course to go through each every single line of code so that you can understand what's going on completely. So just remember to subscribe to see that course that's going to come out soon. Just remember to leave a like and comment. And if you are still watching, you are super awesome. And I will see you in the next video.